Hi, this is Anthony and welcome back to my show. As I launch right in, I would sincerely appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps me out in building this channel and it doesn't cost you anything. In each of my videos, I ask my viewers to leave a comment, even if they really disagree with me. And on occasion, viewers do comment, sometimes in agreement and sometimes we have to agree to disagree. Sometimes they express dismay as to why I continually make videos that critique or criticize the stock of certain companies. And sometimes they request that I stop because they believe that my videos are helping to drive down the price of the company. Truthfully, I wish that I was so influential and powerful that I and less than 250 people who have subscribed to my channel so far are able to move the stock market. But I think we have to be honest with ourselves and realize that what I say here is not going to move the stock price one cent. Nor do I want to do that. My goal with these videos is to help educate people and encourage them to make informed choices when considering buying, selling, or holding shares in a company, especially in low price companies that might be considered penny stocks and may on the face of it appear to be bargains. Every investor, including Warren Buffett, makes mistakes from time to time on certain purchases in the stock market. Obviously, successful investors like Buffett make far less mistakes than others. I'm not perfect. I've made plenty of mistakes when buying stocks and hopefully I learn from those mistakes. And what I'm trying to do here is encourage you not to make the same mistakes that I've made. And let's bring this back to the topic of today's focus and that is Arkimoto, but the same can also be extrapolated for Solo, which in some but not all respects is similar to Arkimoto. They basically are making three-wheeled electric vehicles. And for full disclosure, I used to have a couple shares of Arkimoto. I lost a large percentage in them because I held on too long, but it was a very small percentage of my portfolio. I don't currently own any shares of it, and I'm not shorting the stock. The same is true for Solo. I've never owned any shares of that company. I do not own any shares now, and I'm not shorting that stock. So why do people like Arkimoto stock? I think that there's two main reasons. As I pointed out, the simple one is that it's a penny stock and people think that they can buy a large amount and it can go up even a small percentage and they can make a killing. Or at least they think that it's really on sale. I think most investors will tell you that in the long run they believe that the stock market is efficient and prices things correctly, but in the short run the price of companies can be far higher or lower than what they realistically should be based on the fundamentals of the company. So Arkimoto stock price could be low because almost everything is down in the current bear market and with a looming recession on the horizon. Or the price could be so low because it's on the way to zero and bankruptcy. The second reason people like the stock is that they have seen the products, at least on videos, or perhaps they've actually seen them on the street, or perhaps used one or even own one. The stock uh, ticker symbol is FUV, which stands for Fun Utility Vehicle. They certainly look fun, and I've gotten comments from many viewers who have driven them and have had a fun time. I've also had a few comments from viewers who express some degree of displeasure, and I'm also seeing negative comments about the ownership experience on sites such as the Better Business Bureau. This is where we can run into some problems, though. Cool or fun products do not necessarily translate into profits, and a healthy stock price. These are very expensive products. In the case of Arkimoto, they are manufactured in the United States, in the state of Oregon, which is becoming a fairly expensive place. But anywhere in the United States, it is extremely expensive to manufacture vehicles compared to what competitors based in countries such as China or India could produce vehicles and ship them over here to consumers for. Right now, companies like Arkimoto are story stocks. They have what on the face of it seems to be a good story, that they make awesome looking fun utility vehicles. If you look for other YouTube videos, there are many content creators in this space who have done videos that I think rely too much on the good story. Perhaps they've ridden in one of the vehicles and had a great time. Perhaps they've talked to the former CEO and got a good impression about the company from him while lightly glancing at some parts of their financials. For instance, Tom Nash did that last year. And as we see, he uploaded the video on June 20th, 2021, at a time when the stock was approximately at $14.72. But what's the story now? 
Now the company's stock is trading at 39 cents a share, and they've just approved a 20 for 1 reverse split so that the stock can remain trading on NASDAQ and not get delisted. The founder and CEO has been removed from that position after being arrested in downtown Eugene while drunk behind the wheel of one of his vehicles. He's still the chairman of the board of directors and the chief visioning officer. The company has had to lay off or furlough about a third of their workforce and are looking for a major investor to inject capital to keep the company afloat. Those are other parts of the story and have more to do with the financials and the stock price ultimately than the positive videos of people having fun driving their vehicles. I've looked at the financials of the company in other videos and they just came out with third quarter financials. I'm not going to go over the financials in this video, but I encourage people to always look at financials when considering whether they should buy, sell, or hold stock in your hopefully well diversified long term portfolio. But certainly financials are a snapshot of how the company is doing now and how it has done in the past. Not necessarily how it will do in the future, but often it is indicative of future trends. And back on the subject of looking at their story, when you do think about each component of the story, think about what people are saying about a company or their products and ask yourself, is that really true? Whenever possible, companies are going to try to put a positive spin on things, whether it's the performance of their products or the results of their financials. Always look at things with a very skeptical, critical eye. Not critical in the sense of being negative necessarily, but being critical in the sense of critiquing things to see if it is logically and factually accurate. For instance, Arkimoto has a couple different vehicles designed for different uses. Certainly, there are the fun utility vehicles for people to drive around and have a good time. They do look fun. I'll give them that. But let's think about one of the other prime uses of another line of their vehicles. That as the so-called last mile delivery vehicle. On the face of it, you might think, yeah, that makes sense. You can hop in it and deliver something quickly. These, of course, are made for the so-called last mile. They're not made for transporting things across the country. That's what you have semi-trucks for. But let's think about this. You probably have seen delivery trucks in your neighborhood delivering to your neighbors or perhaps to you. Those trucks are delivering to the last mile, that is, to individual customers. But how many delivery drivers are driving something the size of an Arkimoto Deliverator? I'm guessing pretty close to zero. What are the delivery companies using? Probably the smallest that they're using are delivery vans, and here are some pictures from Amazon and UPS and FedEx. And in the case of UPS, all the delivery trucks I see are the much larger ones. And these are vehicles filled with packages, sometimes quite big ones. How many packages could you get in Arkimoto's Deliverator? Just eyeballing it, I would say not many. How much does a Deliverator sell for? Looking at Arkimoto's website, it looks like it starts at $25,000. And I'm aware that there may be state or federal EV rebates and other tax write-off implications for this and my next example. But just to make things simple, let's go with the listed prices. So I just randomly looked for another delivery vehicle. In this case, I just typed in Ford delivery vehicle and this one popped up which looks like Ford's cheapest model, starting at $43,455. Sure, that's nearly $20,000 more than the base price of Arkimoto's, but it has seats for two people, has vastly more storage space, which is important because the whole purpose of this is to deliver boxes of goods to people. It has doors, and I would imagine that it probably has heat and air conditioning. Right now, as I'm composing this, I live in Oregon, the same state, as where Arkimoto is located. It's a little after 6 p.m. in November. It's pitch black dark outside and colder than your refrigerator. If somebody is going to be delivering things at this time or even earlier, they're not going to want to be driving around your neighborhood in, a ch in chilly weather in an electric tricycle with no doors and limited storage capacity. Playing around on an Arkimoto vehicle may be fun when the weather and temperatures are pleasant. But for much of the year, many parts of the United States are snowy or rainy or extremely cold or extremely hot and not really conducive for driving around in a three-wheeled electric delivery vehicle that hardly holds anything. 
A vehicle like that might make some, some sense in a big city where legal documents need to be dropped off on short notice, although that's usually done by bicycle messengers who ride on sidewalks and dodge people and weave around things which are not going to be able to be done by an EV. There are certainly going to be occasions when a high-valued item needs to be delivered promptly and could be delivered by an Arkimoto vehicle. But for the vast majority of things, it does not make economic sense to be driving one of these products from a distribution center to a couple houses and then back to pick up more items and then back out for deliveries and so on throughout the day. It makes far more sense to spend a little bit more money for a much larger, secure and comfortable delivery van that can go out and deliver perhaps to hundreds of customers during the day. Okay, that's all I want to say about that. My point here is that on the face of it, it may sound like a good idea and look like a good product. But if it was such a great product, then why hasn't Amazon and FedEx and UPS and other delivery companies started using these vehicles or other similar vehicles? Because they do not make economic sense for most deliveries. I'm going to end here because this is starting to get longer than I had intended. My point is I want people to do well when investing and I have nothing against this or other companies. I would love to see them flourish and become profitable. I would love to see their shareholders make money. But when you look at the fundamentals, even when you look at the story, critiquing it objectively, ignoring all the fluff, you see that they are in desperate financial straits and there is nothing on the horizon at this point that indicates that this will be a profitable security to hold for the medium to long term. If you disagree with me and want to hold on to a few shares, that's certainly your right. But I would strongly caution you to try to think objectively about this. If you are in big on this and you've lost a lot of money so far, I understand that you want to hold on and hopefully at least break even. But sometimes you just have to make the tough decisions and sell your losers. And you can still keep the company on your radar. And if they turn around and start making a profit, you can get in at that point. And of course, the same holds true for any investors in solo. I know that some of my viewers are still going to strongly disagree with me. I encourage everyone, including those people who don't quite agree with me, to leave a comment in the comment section. As I pointed out in my previous Arkimoto video, according to their press statement, the company is not going to issue partial shares after the reverse split, and it seems like they may round up your partial shares to a whole new share on November 29th when, they, when the change takes effect. Please be sure to watch that video and I may make a new one on that subject and release it soon. Again, thank you so much for watching and good luck in investing.